Incredibles is a 2004 Pixar movie directed by Brad Bird. It's a classic, and arguably Pixar's most unique film, both visually and tonally. Not only is this one of Pixar's more complex films, but it's also its darkest and most mature film. Many fans of Pixar's films consider The Incredibles to be one of the studio's greatest achievements. When considering this movie's aesthetic, it's very easy to see what style is used. The movie, taking place in 1962, utilizes mid-century modernism, an art style that was prevalent during the 1930s to 60s, characterized by minimalistic streamlined designs. To examine this more closely, let's start by looking at the movie's first few scenes. These scenes take place 15 years before the rest of the events in the movie. This fact is made extremely clear through the opening scene's aspect ratio and quality. It looks tailor-made for a small TV from the late 40s. After this scene, there's a short title sequence featuring vibrant coloring, and then we transition into a police chase. This scene too clearly showcases the time period we're viewing. Just take a look at these cars. They're sleek, smooth, streamlined, and clearly retro. These cars are perfectly showcasing the mid-century modern art style. So as you can see, in just the first few scenes, The Incredibles sets up the general aesthetic it's going for and begins to develop a distinct style. As the film progresses, we see a few other superheroes, with bright costumes clearly inspired by those of classic superhero designs used during the 1940s. But when the movie's 1947 opening ends, and we transitioned in 1962, we notice a sharp change. Mid-century modernism is still in use, but everything seems blander. The colors are noticeably muted, and although a streamlined look is maintained, the overall surroundings seem rougher, less elegant. But the dreariness runs much deeper than that. There's something missing. Before we continue, let's go back to the opening scenes, but this time, we'll examine the audible style that is used. The Incredibles really does have a wonderful soundtrack, and it's perfect for a superhero movie. It blends suspense with action, drama with fun, all while maintaining a relatively uplifting tone. Without this music in the opening scenes, this world wouldn't seem so full of life, so action-packed. These superheroes wouldn't seem so super. Not only is the music tonally appropriate, it's also time-appropriate taking clear inspiration from 1960s spy music. You'll notice that this trend continues throughout the film. If you think about it, The Incredibles is as much a spy movie as it is a superhero movie, if not more so. This movie's soundtrack is a perfect match and ties everything together nicely. The music specifically playing during the opening scenes is simply entitled The Glory Days. But what happens when The Glory Days are over? What happens when the music stops? We return to 1962. The visuals are bland. The ever-important music is missing. And because of this, the tone, the emotion behind the movie is skewed. Let's discuss the emotional aesthetic of this film. Up to this point, everything has been fairly upbeat, but now things are different. We flashed forward to a time where superheroes have been banned. The glory days are over. And what's left is... bleak. It's like the life has been sucked out of everything. It's no longer incredible. But to say it's just ordinary would be missing the point. The reason for the bleakness isn't because everything is ordinary. It's because we're seeing this world from Mr. Incredible's point of view. To him, now that his golden age is over and life is now average, it's not just ordinary, it's depressing. As the film progresses, Mr. Incredible learns what's most important. It isn't his adventures or what he thought was the best time of his life. What's really important is his family. As the movie continues and Mr. Incredible comes to realize this, the emotional style shifts drastically. From upbeat to bleak, to optimistic, to well, incredibly dark, then to an atmosphere of understanding, and finally, the movie ends in an even happier tone than the beginning. This film utilizes its unique aesthetic to its full advantage, 
Rather than simply using plot to drive the overall emotion of the film, slight changes are made both visually and audibly to really convey a clear tone. Now, there's a lot more to The Incredibles than what I've discussed so far, but this movie does a great job of presenting its styles and themes right off the bat. It's part of why it's such a strong film and why it's considered one of Pixar's best works. To summarize, The Incredibles has a very retro aesthetic, utilizing a mid-century modern style from the 40s to 60s. This is reflected not only visually, but audibly as the soundtrack is clearly influenced by 60s music. From an emotional standpoint, The Incredibles explores themes about family, what it means to be a hero, and much more. It evokes a sense of nostalgia, and it perfectly balances dark and light emotions to create a well-rounded story. It really is incredible. I hope you enjoyed this video. This subject is something that I've wanted to discuss for a while, but I wasn't sure how to do it. If you have any feedback or ideas regarding this new series, be sure to let me know down in the comments. It's always appreciated. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Thank you.